In today's lecture, we will focus on studying torsional transients uh, in a generator turbine system. The reason why I have chosen this particular uh, topic uh, as a kind of a case study is uh, because the modeling required for studying this these transients or these dynamics uh, are somewhat different from uh, the modeling uh, the kind of modeling we did to study slow transients. Slow transients I mean uh, uh, power swings and uh, for example, loss of synchronism, power swings, uh, frequency stability that is the common motion of the frequency in a multi machine system. These were relatively slow transients in which the way we model our network or even the turbine generator system was uh, appropriate for the study of slow transients. Okay. So, uh, in today's lecture, we will uh, focus on uh, torsional transients and the phenomena of uh, sub synchronous resonance, which I will try to describe to you and uh, we will also try to do an analysis of this particular uh, phenomena. And uh, what we really are going to study is uh, torsional transients, when I say torsional transient, it really refers to the kind of torsion which is experienced by the shaft of a uh, turbine generator system okay, or there may be several shafts in case there are many turbines. Okay. So, we need to model the shaft turbine generator system, the mechanical system as a multi mass uh, by as a multi mass system which is connected by uh, elastic shafts. Okay. So, what we normally do of course, uh, what we have done so far uh, when we have modeled a uh, synchronous machine a generator the mechanical equations we have considered it as one uh, the, the turbine generator system is considered as one lumped uh, uh, rotor mass okay whose inertia we we called h okay here what we will be doing is that instead of treating the generator and the turbine as one mass we will be treating as uh, two or more separate masses connected by shafts okay so the phenomena in fact we are going to study that is uh, the transients associated with the torsion in the shaft of course, requires you to model it in this way. Okay. One more important point of course, is that the network and stator flux transients are not neglected in this study as it will turn out the torsional transients of interest uh, have a bandwidth of uh, uh, several hertz I mean from 10 hertz onwards okay, typically and uh, it would not be appropriate to neglect network transients. Okay. In fact, uh, if you look at a, a mechanical system of a generator and a turbine, just one turbine and uh, a generator, then uh, it can be modeled in the way it is shown here. You have got two masses, rotor masses, the turbine and the generator. The shaft mass also is there. So, in principle, if you look at it uh, in a very strict sense, uh, even the turbine generator system along with the shaft is actually a distributed parameter system because the shaft also has some mass. Okay. But what we will do is we will assume that the turbine generator system can be modeled well by two masses in this case in the figure which is shown we have got two masses connected by a shaft which has got a sta shaft stiffness uh, which we call we denote as k and the rotational mass uh, inertia is m. Okay and the damping is d of course, there can be damping uh, there can be viscous damping uh, which is proportional to the speed of the turbine, the speed of the generator or the difference speed between them. Okay. So, that is why you have got d 1, d 2 and d 1 2. Okay. Now, if you look at this particular system, okay, uh, you will find that the equations of this system are effectively m d omega by d t m is of course, if, if things are in per unit then m is 2 h by omega b. Okay. But, in case you are uh, you are talking in uh, actual m k s units you will have m is in k g meter square okay, and k will be in uh, Newton meter per radian. Okay. So, of course, if you write everything in m k s units, then you will have j, okay, the same is uh, this j is nothing in k uh, is in k g meter square d omega rotational by d t okay, is equal to 
mechanical torque minus yeah the electrical torque this was of course the equation we used for a single lumped mass okay right now we have got two lumped masses okay connected by a shaft so the equations are in fact j1 d omega by dt omega 1 by dt is equal to for example for the turbine i'll call this turbine in this particular figure which you see on the screen uh, there is one turbine mass so if you look at the equations for that the mechanical torque is actually uh, applied by the steam on this turbine mass okay so tm appears in this equation minus there is no electrical torque actually on a turbine okay actually what you have essentially is k the position of the shaft okay so you've got delta turbine minus the delta generator so this is basically giving you the torque equation of the turbine okay if you look at the generator is equal to k delta t minus delta g minus the electrical torque okay this is the electrical torque okay so actually if remember that when we wrote uh, the equation for a generator okay if you recall the kind of equations we were writing for the study of slow transients we just had one j and tm minus t were applied on the same mass so what was the assumption there was that if this is the turbine connected by a shaft to a generator and the shaft has got infinite stiffness then you can treat this turbine generator system as one mass on which tm is applied in one direction and t is applied in another direction the speeds are equal okay but in case that is omega t is equal to omega g but in case this shaft is elastic okay it does twist a bit it has got some torsion in that case omega t is not equal to omega g and of course you the you cannot treat this as one lumped mass okay so for the slow of study of slow transients we do consider that this is one lumped mass okay and tm and te apply to the same mass and omega t is equal to omega g okay but in case you are studying torsional transients in the shaft the shaft is treated as an elastic shaft okay and remember that omega t and omega g are not the same the angular position delta t and delta g are also not the same and the force on the shaft okay is k times there is a stiffness constant into the difference of the position of the torque uh, turbine and the generator mass okay so if if there is a twist or a torsion okay then you have got a force okay so the equations of a two mass connected by an elastic shaft system is actually given by this okay remember the t is applied on the generator mass and tm is applied on the turbine mass okay now of course you can uh, easily show that the center of inertia moment of this is you can just you know just rewrite these equations and add them up you will find that jt plus jg okay d omega t into jt plus omega g into j g upon j t plus j g this is the center of inertia speed of the machine is equal to t m minus t e okay so in fact this can be written as j d omega by d t is equal to t m minus t e so please remember that whatever we were doing previously i mean we were treating the machine the generator and the turbine as one mass on which tm and te are acting is in fact in some way valid in the sense that it is describing the motion of the center of inertia of these two masses okay so if you are uh, the center of inertia of the two masses is affected by tm minus te okay but the individual speeds okay are determined by these equations okay so this is an important point which you should note 
whatever modeling we have done so far assume that the generator and the turbine shafts are one and the same. Okay. But remember that they are different when, uh, when connected by an elastic shaft the speeds are different etcetera. But whatever we have done before is not invalid only remember that the speed mechanical uh, speed of the of motion it was in that case essentially the center of inertia motion of this system. Okay. So, whatever we have done before is not invalid in the sense that we had considered T m T acting on the same mass the road turbine generator as one lumped mass and omega t and omega g kind of equal. Instead, we should say now that when we modeled the turbine generator system for the study of slow transients, we did not take into account the elastic shaft sections, but the center of inertia motion of that turbine mass rotor system okay, equation was indeed correct. I mean what we use essentially was that. Okay. So, we do not have to unlearn whatever we have done before. Okay. We do not have to unlearn the modeling which we have done before for the study of slow transients. Remember that the in the study of slow transients what we essentially took was j was the total inertia j t plus j g omega was essentially the center of inertia speed and T m and T were acting on the center of inertia you can say okay, of the system. So, we do not have to unlearn anything what we have done before as far as the slow transients are concerned. Okay. The only thing we should remember that the motion of the center of inertia was just one aspect of the motion which is okay uh, for the study of slow transients, but remember that actually there are two sets of equations and in addition to the motion of the center of inertia you also have a, an additional pattern. Okay. The additional pattern is essentially the oscillatory pattern okay, or the staff, uh, shaft torsional oscillations which may result because of the spring mass type system. Okay. So, we have got two masses connected by elastic shaft, we have got the center of inertia motion which is essentially governed by the equation. Okay. This equation can be used for the study of slow transients, but in addition to that there are in fact faster transients associated with the rotor torsion. So, in fact the two modes associated with this kind of system. Okay one is an oscillatory mode and one is a common mode of motion. Okay. The oscillatory mode of, mode of motion has got an inertia uh, uh, natural frequency of oscillation which is given by the shaft constant divided by j t j g upon j t plus j g okay, raised to half. So, this is effectively in fact I should say this is uh, the kind of uh, this is in fact omega n. Okay. So, if this is in uh, this kind of equation results uh, or this kind of frequency of oscillation results for this kind of system. Okay. So, we have got this additional pattern in the motion which is uh, actually pertaining to the torsional oscillations in the shaft. Okay. Now, The interesting thing why why do we really require to understand or uh, study this uh, why did I select this particular phenomena is that the torsional transients in fact any any motion of this kind is excited by changes in T m or T e. Okay. So, T m and T e in fact are like inputs to this uh, you know uh, kind of torsional system and suppose for example, there is a transient in T e, it excites these torsional oscillations as well. Okay. So, this additional pattern of motion is now we are trying to understand. Okay. Now, the reason why we as, as I was just trying to tell you the reason why we are trying to study these particular transients is that uh, there was one interesting situation wherein the electrical network okay, caused torques which actually caused these torsional oscillations to go unstable okay. and under these circumstances the fatigue on the shaft due to oscillations you know if you take a metallic uh, any metallic uh, shaft okay and you give it a very large displacement okay 
let us say a torsional displacement, it tends to come back to its original position. But if the torsional displacement is too large okay, or the displacement caused by the torsion is too large, the shaft may actually uh, get damaged, it may actually uh, fail. Okay. So, this kind of situation did occur because the electrical, uh, electrical torque which is an input to this mechanical system okay, caused an adverse effect in which the oscillations grew with time and the system became unstable, the torsional oscillations grew instead of dying out. Normally, one would expect that because of the frictional and windage torques okay, which are uh, associated with the, uh, with the steam turbine and the bearings, okay. one would expect that eventually the torsional oscillations if excited would die down, there are these damping, uh, uh, damping torques uh, you know present in this system. Okay. So, one would expect the torsional oscillations if they exist would actually die out, but because of uh, adverse interactions with the electrical network, there has been uh, an experience in the past in which the shaft got damaged because the torsional oscillation did not die down because of damping, but because of adverse interactions with the electrical network, they actually grew with time. Okay. The oscillations grew and the shaft got damaged. Okay. So, that is why I have chosen uh, this particular topic. We will now we, we will try to understand the interaction of this shaft torsional system with the electrical network. How does the electrical network okay, affect these oscillations? Okay. So, this is the the topic of in fact today's lecture. Remember that although I have given you an example of a two mass connected by a elastic shaft kind of turbine generator system, you can have several especially in steam turbines you may have several turbine stages. In fact, there may be a high pressure turbine, an intermediate pressure turbine, two low pressure turbines all interconnected to each other by coupled to each other by a shaft and then coupled to a generator and maybe even a rotary exciter. So, this is the whole rotary system of a turbine generator system. Okay. And in such a case, for example, here you have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 masses, you have got in fact 5 modes of oscillation and one, uh, one pattern of motion which corresponds to uh, the center of inertia motion, wherein all the masses move together, rotor masses move together. Okay. So, if you look at this kind of uh, turbine generator system, please remember that if you have got 6 masses, you have 5 modes of torsional oscillations and 1 mode of common motion in which all the masses move together. Okay. The common motion of the all the masses moving together has already been studied in some to some extent. When we studied the uh, you know low frequency swings, we treated the whole all the rotor masses of the system of the turbine generator system to be 1 okay. and the T m and T is actually applied to just this one equivalent mass. That was essentially uh, uh, you know representative of the common motion of the turbine generator system in which all the masses move together. This is, but remember that this is just one of the patterns of motion of this turbine generator system, there are 5 other in this case uh, torsional modes. Okay. These are oscillatory modes. Okay. The frequency of oscillation of course, depends on the masses and the shaft uh, data or the uh, shaft parameters of this particular system. Okay. Now, the point is of course, that the torsional oscillations are affected by the electrical torque, because the electrical torque appears like a kind of an input to this system. Okay. So, that is why in this particular diagram, I have shown you basically the electrical network as well. Remember that the generator is connected to a transformer and then to a transmission line and then it is connected to a system, uh, the, say the say an infinite bus or a voltage source. Okay. So, in this particular system, it turns out that under certain circumstances, you can have adverse interactions between the turbine and the generator, a uh, turbine generator system and the electrical network. And what you see very importantly is that this particular system in, a, in which I say there is a possibility of adverse interaction has got a series capacitor connected to it. Okay. 
Now, a series capacitor is connected to a transmission line. This transmission line is represented as a, as a lumped R L circuit. Okay. Series compensation this, this capacitor or capacitive series compensation of a transmission line is done to reduce the effective x of the line. Now, why is that done Re reducing the effective reactance of a transmission line? The thing is which you have discussed some time ago is that a reduced reactance in a transmission system okay, allows for more power transfer, okay, secure power transfer. In fact, if you have got a system in which the reactance between generators or the reactance between a generator and a voltage source is lesser, you can show that the amount of uh, the it is more secure under large disturbances. So, if you have got lesser reactance, you can show that for a given large disturbance, a system with lesser reactance, okay, system reactance okay, is more secure in the sense that it can it can sustain a large disturbance without losing synchronism. Okay. So, in fact that is the reason why you have series compensation of transmission lines. Okay. Now, if you look at the basic problem which I was trying to address or which I gave you an idea about was that under certain circumstances okay, a series compensated electrical network can cause shaft damage. Okay. This is something which I was trying to really uh, tell you about or this is the whole lecture is about this. Okay. Now, how can uh, you may wonder that how does effectively the turbine shaft come into the picture. Okay. Remember that suppose this is your turbine generator system. Okay. These are several masses and uh, suppose let us just try to take a kind of intuitive way of looking at things. Suppose I because of some random disturbance or some random change in the mechanical torque in the turbine maybe it, it may be a very very small change okay in that that would cause torsional oscillations to be set up after all you give any system which has got certain torsional uh, frequencies in this case there are five if there are five or six masses you've got five torsional frequencies if you have got two masses, you have got just one torsional frequency like I showed you here, okay. but if you have got six masses, you will have five torsional frequencies. I give a, a kind of a disturbance to the say to the mechanical torque. Okay. In that case, you will find that you know in general, if I give a kind of a disturbance say to two or three shafts at the same time, you will find that all these torsional oscillations will be excited. Okay. So, if I give a push here, 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 here and here suppose you know some disturbance because of which I you know displace these masses from equilibrium. Okay. You will find that these torsional oscillation frequencies are excited. Remember one uh, small point which you should not ever lose track of is all these masses are rotating at you know uh, the rated uh, near about the rated frequency under normal circumstances. So, if it is a 3000 rpm turbine you will find all these masses are moving at 3000 rpm. There is no relative motion between any of them under equilibrium. Okay. But if I give a push to one or more turbines it is likely that one or more torsional oscillations would be excited. This is what I actually wanted to say it probably would not have been very clear the way I put it earlier. So, if I give a push or any disturbance or I displace one of the masses let us say somehow I give an impulsive torque to one of the turbines just you know just uh, think of it as some kind of thought experiment give a impulsive push to one or more of these uh, turbines okay, uh, turbine uh, stages you will find that these various torsional modes are excited. Now, if these torsional modes are also observable in the speed the generator speed. Okay. In that case you will find that the voltage is induced okay, on the stator of the turbine will also contain signatures of this torsional frequencies. Okay. So, instead of having a three phase 50 hertz supply 
if I give a small push to any of these turbines and that triggers of torsional oscillations which are observable in omega uh, omega g which is the speed of the generator you will find that it will cause. So, instead of the speed of a turbine generator system or the generator speed being a constant if it has oscillations these will manifest in the voltages which appear uh, at the terminals of a synchronous generator and if that happens it will obviously cause some currents in the transmission system. So, if you have got a voltage source which has got uh, you know torsional frequency components or the complement of the torsional frequency components you will find that it will cause currents also of that frequency because your network will respond to that. Okay. Now, once you have got currents okay, as a result of this disturbance okay, it will cause torques. Now, so let me put it this way you have got a torsional turbine generator mechanical system this is the electrical network. Okay. The any torsional if you excite torsional oscillations here they will have effects on the electrical network in the sense that the electrical network also will see some currents okay, because of this torsional oscillation and if this currents interacts with the torques which are present in the generator to cause electrical torques which enhance the oscillations which in effect created it one can kind of see that these oscillations may actually grow with time. Are you getting what I am trying to say? So, you, you have got a uh, turbine generator system the torsional oscillations which are excited the torsional oscillations cause variations in the generator speed the variation in the generator speed cause variations in the electrical voltage which appears at the terminal of a generator that causes currents in the electrical network disturbance currents in the network. The electrical currents which are caused okay, cause torques okay, disturbance torques. Now, if this electrical disturbance torque is such that it enhances the existing torsional oscillation which is exact uh, which is excited you will find that the torsional oscillation may go unstable. Okay. So, this is a kind of a cause and effect reasoning of how under certain circumstances it is possible that the electrical torque causes a torsional mode to get become unstable. Of course, it all depends on whether the electrical torques caused okay, enhance the existing oscillation or not and this enhancement can actually occur under very special circumstances and that those special circumstances are when the electrical network is compensated by series capacitors okay, and the torsional oscillation is subsynchronous in nature. That is if the torsional oscillation is less than 50 hertz, torsional frequency is less than 50 hertz and you have got an electrical network which is series compensated under these circumstances it turns out that the electrical torques are generally destabilizing in nature that is they tend to enhance the oscillations which cause them. Okay. So, the torch you gave a disturbance caused the torsional oscillation it caused uh, changes in electrical voltage that caused currents disturbances in the currents. The currents cause electrical torques the electrical torques enhance the existing oscillation. This can occur if the torsional frequency is less than 50 hertz and the system is also series compensated by the use of capacitors. Okay. So, this, this kind of phenomena is therefore, called sub synchronous resonance, because it is like a situation in which the electrical system okay, acts like an input to the torsional turbine generator torsional system and the input is such that it enhances the existing oscillation. So, it is like almost like a situation uh, which we call as resonance. Okay. In fact, I will show you that a series compensated system has got a resonant frequency which you know comes close to the torsional frequency. Okay. 
it could come close to a torsional frequency okay and then we would have a classical resonance kind of system where the electrical system is kind of you know giving a input to the torsional system tor turbine generator system which is near about one of its natural frequencies so you know the oscillations can grow so this kind of rough kind of cause and effect description of this phenomena is something which i have given you now it's obvious that you would have found that uh, i have not explained everything in a very rigorous fashion okay for example you may say well actually this turbine and generator and electrical system are one system it's not right to treat the electrical system as a kind of a input to the turbine generator system it's a one combined dynamical system that is indeed correct okay what i've done is given you a cause and effect analysis in which the oscillation is caused by the turbine generator system and the electrical network reacts to it and then what you get out of it is an input again to the turbine generator system that's why i use the word resonance uh, you know it's a kind of a forced uh, rather the forced response to an input but this is not you know those who are uh, who have done this course of course would not like uh, the way i have described this phenomena it's not a very rigorous way of descri uh, describing how this phenomena occurs so let us actually try to you know model this system okay and uh, try to see what are the steps in the modeling of course i will not uh, uh, you know it's not possible to uh, explain in a cause and effect fashion uh, when your when your system sizes become greater than 10 or 20 or 30 differential equations okay so that's the reason why i actually started up the discussion in a very non rigorous fashion okay but now what i'll do is i'll just try to describe to you the models which are used why the electrical network under series compensated conditions can have a subsynchronous resonance frequency that is something which i will also try to explain to you and therefore show you a case study uh, wherein the turbine uh, the one of the torsional oscillations is in fact uh, unstable okay so this is something i will try to explain to you uh, by uh, modeling this electrical network uh, in little bit more detail okay so why does series why do series compensated network networks connected to uh, turbine generator systems especially t steam turbine generator systems cause uh, or other cause torsional oscillations to grow under certain circumstances is what we'll try to understand okay of course you may wonder why i used just just right now i use the word steam turbines okay in fact you can have uh, you know you you have a turbine as well as a generator even in a hydro turbine okay but it turns out that in a hydro turbine generator system the generator mass is much much larger compared to the uh, mass of the turbine so in some ways uh, you can say that the generator in some sense screens the electrical network from the torsional system okay so this is this is the kind of uh, um, thing which we'll try to understand for a steam generator the ssr phenomena the subsynchronous resonance phenomena for a steam generator okay so let us first look at how would you model a synchronous machine and electrical network which is compensated by a transmission uh, by series capacitors okay so let's just look at this modeling okay so we'll just we have already done this modeling of a synchronous generator this is the q axis equations in per unit okay psi g psi k psi q okay are the fluxes on the d uh, on the q axis okay there are three differential equations and one algebraic equation which relates psi q psi k and psi g to i q okay so the third equation here is an algebraic equation the t axis model is similar only remember that the d in the d axis uh, the field flux or or one of the fluxes of uh, or rather the field voltage appears in the equation so this efd in fact is proportional to the field voltage okay so otherwise the equations look quite similar so in fact efd is proportional to the field voltage okay we do not of course consider the zero sequence equations in fact this phenomena 
uh, can be understood. In fact, it is uh, a balanced kind of phenomena. So, we will not can be understood even under balanced situations these things occur. So, we will not need to consider unbalance for understanding this phenomena. So, this 0 sequence equation in some sense is redundant in this analysis. The torque equation is something we already know. In the above equations or the equations which I have shown you so far, omega is in fact the electrical angular speed in radian per second okay? and omega b is the base frequency. Okay? Now, if you have got a transmission line which connects a synchronous generator to a, a voltage source, okay? a three phase voltage source whose voltages are E a, E b and E c. Okay? V A, V B, V C of course, in this are the generator terminal voltages and V C A, V C B and V C C are in fact, the voltages of the capacitor. So, if you are looking of a interconnection like this, a lumped electrical network are, okay. this is a three phase network. So, in fact, all of the resistances we can take as equal in all the three phases the uh, the three phases the inductances are all coupled so you got if you look at this slide you will find that ls lm lm are the mutual inductance the lm are the mutual coupling between the a b and c phases okay r is the resistance of the line va vb vc is the generator terminal voltage okay then vca vcb vc c are the voltages of the capacitor for the series compensated network okay? and of course, the infinite bus or the voltage source voltages are E A, E B, E C. So, I have just shown it for A phase. Okay? So, this kind of network is there, this is what I will be studying you and showing you this phenomena of adverse torsional interactions of the electrical network with the turbine generator system. Okay? Now, if you convert these equations to the d q per unit form, this is what you will get. I have ignored the 0 sequence equations. So, this is something we had done before uh, when we studied the uh, simulation of a generator in AVR, a generator with an AVR for a single machine infinite bus simulation which we did several lectures ago. The only difference here of course, is that you have got these capacitor voltages also coming into the picture. Okay? So, this V C D and V C Q are the capacitor voltages. Okay? Of course, the infinite bus d q components, okay, if you have got a voltage source uh, E A, E B, E C, okay, then the infinite volt, uh, uh, bus voltages are minus E sin delta and E Q sin delta. This of course, assumes that E A to neutral for a star connected infinite bus would be root 2 by 3 sin omega naught t okay? and theta the position of the synchronous machine is omega naught t plus delta. So, with this assumption E d and E q come out to be this. Remember that the d q transformation uses paths transformation. We have learned this C p transformation which is a function of theta. Okay? So, this is what we get. One of the important things which you should note is d delta by d t as a result of this equation d delta by d t is nothing but omega. Okay. So, d delta by d t is d theta by d t is omega. So, d delta by d t from this will be equal to omega minus omega naught. Okay. One of the assumptions we will be making is that the infinite bus frequency omega naught is equal to the base frequency or the rated frequency. Okay. So, I will not make a distinguishing distinguish I will not distinguish between omega naught and omega b. Okay. So, please remember that in all our analysis. Now, uh, it turns out that we have written down drawn a differential equation for the currents I d and I q. Okay? There is also a differential equation for psi d okay? and psi d and I d are also related algebraically. So, let me just put this matter to you psi d psi q are states. So, there are differential equations which describe them. I d i q also I have written it uh, in terms of differential equations, they are independent equations here. Okay? But 
independent I mean separate equations ok. Of course, they are related. We also have an algebraic relationship between psi d i d and psi q i q ok. And in fact, psi d psi g psi uh, psi psi h yeah, psi f and psi g and psi k. So, we have got an algebraic relationship as well. For example, the third equation here gives you the algebraic relationship between i d and psi d ok. So, the point is that do we really need since there is a relationship between psi and i, there is no need to write these equations separately. I mean you do not have to write two sets of differential equations, one for psi d, uh, psi d psi q and i d i q. There is no need to do that because they are algebraically related. So, what I will do is I uh, will combine these equations and make them into one equation. Okay. So, there is no need let me repeat to have separate equations for psi d psi q i d and i q. No it is a need for separate differential equations because they are algebraically related. In fact, if I do represent them separately and I give the give initial conditions to psi d psi q and i d i q which are not compatible with the algebraic algebraic relationship between them, I will end up with a problem. Okay? I will be giving inconsistent kind of initial conditions. So, it is better idea not to write separate equations for psi d psi q i d and i d i q because they are algebraically related. Of course, this problem will not arise or rather this issue will not arise if you have got something in shunt between for example, resistive load or a capacitor in shunt with the generator and the transmission line. Okay. In that case, the generator current and the transmission line current are different. Okay. So, you can you will have to, you can write separate equations for this and separate equations for psi d and psi q because the currents here and the currents here are not are not the same. Okay. And uh, so, this is one thing you should remember that if there is no shunt connection between the generator and the transmission line which is modeled by a lump uh, inductance. Okay. In that case, you do not have to write separate differential equations for psi d psi q and i d i q. Okay. Of course, somebody may say that look uh, you do actually have a shunt connection in the form of parasitics and all that, but remember uh, in this particular model we shall not consider parasitic capacitances etcetera which exist between any electrical structure and ground say. Okay. So, we will assume that nothing is connected in shunt and as a result of which we will just try to have one combined equation for psi d psi q and i d i q instead of two sets of equations for them. Okay. So, how can we do this? A uh, simple way of doing it, there are many ways you can do it is just to add up the differential equations uh, uh, of psi d and x i d. Okay. And if you do that, it is interesting that this is what you will get if resistances are neglected. So, if you assume that the transmission line resistance is small, which is not really true, but just for the simplified analysis, let us assume, assume it is true. And the stator resistance of a synchronous machine is also small, which is in fact true, it is very very small. In that case, we get this particular model by simply adding up the two equations. What effectively we have done is got rid of V d and V q out of this okay. and we have got just one uh, set of two differential equations instead of four differential equations separate equations in psi d psi q and i d i q. Now, if we assume in addition the x d double dash and x q double dash are also equal and equal to x double dash, then it is very easy to see that since psi d is equal to x double dash i d plus something which is dependent on fluxes psi f and psi h, it is a linear relationship, I will just call it g. Okay and psi q is equal to x double dash i q plus f uh, I will call this g 1 and g 2 psi g and psi k. Okay. I can substitute this substitute for psi d and psi q in this particular equation and what I will get is essentially what you see on the screen. Okay. So, you will get I have replaced psi d and psi q okay, in terms of i d and i q and uh, in that case you will get this particular relationship. E 1 and E 2 of course, will be dependent on psi f, psi h, psi g and psi k. Okay. 
So, what I have done is substituted for psi d and psi q in the previous equation. Okay. So, the previous equation was this, this itself was obtained by combining the stator flux and the transmission line current equations and uh, this is what we get. Now, let us do another step. Remember that E 1, E 2 are in fact dependent on psi f, psi g, psi, psi f, psi g, psi h and psi k. Okay. So, E 1 and E 2 are dependent on the rotor fluxes and what we get here next is this. Of course, in the this particular equation, there is one important assumption which I have made that the rotor fluxes are assumed to be constant. So, d psi f by d t, d psi h by d t, d psi g by d t and d psi k by d t are assumed to be 0. So, they are in fact constants. Okay. So, remember that in the modeling which I am doing, this is a very simplified model of the synchronous generator uh, and transmission line. I have assumed resistances are negligibly small. Okay. Uh, x double dash x d double dash is equal to x q double dash, then the rotor fluxes are assumed to be constant. Why are they assumed to be constant? The presumption here of course, is that the study which I am going to do is relating to fast transients and the, the fluxes, the rotor fluxes are relatively slow. So, that is the kind of assumption I made uh, when I said that the rotor fluxes are assumed to be constant. Okay. So, this particular model which we get uh, assumes these three things. Okay. Resistances are small, the transient sub transient reactances are equal on the d and q axis and the rotor fluxes are constant. Okay. So, this E 1, E 2 are in fact dependent on the rotor fluxes. Now, if I if you look at this particular equation E d and E q are dependent on delta. Okay. So, I would write like to rewrite these equations by converting the d q variables, these are lower case d q variables obtained by Parkes transformation which uses the rotor position of the generator. I transform this to the capital or upper case d and q using this transformation. Okay. We have done this before in our study of uh, uh, induction machine and so on. We convert it into a capital d q or upper case d q reference frame. In fact, uh, if you recall in the two machine system also, we had converted all the equations of the interface variables, okay, the voltages and currents to this upper case d and q variables, so that we could use k v l and k c l on them. Okay. Here again, we apply this transformation. So, what I have done is the previous equation I have just transformed to the new variables using this transformation and if you do that, what you obtain is what is shown here. Okay. Now, the important thing uh, which you should note here is that E capital D and E capital Q are in fact constants, they are not dependent on delta. Okay. So, this is one important thing which you see here. Okay. Now, we uh, the remaining question here in the model of the electrical network is what is V C D and V C Q? These are the capacitor voltages in the D Q reference frame. Okay. So, if you look at the capacitor equations for the three phases, these are suppose three lumped capacitors connected in series with the transmission line, then the differential equations look the way I have written them down here. Okay. Now, if I transform them into the d q reference frame, what you get is this. Okay. Remember, the 0 sequence has been neglected okay, or rather disregarded here, because we are going to talk only of uh, balance situations and the 0 sequence equations are in fact decoupled completely from the d q equations. What you notice here of course, in this equation is that you have got this additional term in addition to the currents. This is of course, coming because we have used a time varying transformation to get from the a b c to the capital d q variables okay, or the upper case d q variables. So, please remember that whenever you apply a transformation to the a b c equations, we effect effectively get this additional terms. Okay. Okay. Now, once you have got this, this is uh, uh, so what we have done is effectively model uh, electrical network. If you look at the equation, these are the equations of a capacitor and e these are the equations of 
the transmission line and stator fluxes assuming that of course, that uh, the rotor fluxes are constants. Okay. So, in fact, if you look at the d q equations, if you look at the d q equations, you have got i d i q v d v q. If you look at the electrical network, d by d t is equal to for the electrical network and generator stator. Okay. Rotor fluxes are assumed to be constant. Okay. These are only the electrical equations. Remember that the, there are equations pertaining to delta and omega. In fact, d delta by d t is equal to omega minus omega naught and of course, I should whenever I am going to talk now of shaft torsional oscillations, I should make it clear that the delta here, you know the we have to make a distinguish uh, we have to make a distinction between the generator speed and delta and the uh, speed and delta corresponding to the other turbine masses okay so this is very important so you do have of course the mechanical equations for the turbine masses they may not be one they may be five or six okay and your generator mass okay so, these there will be differential equations corresponding to that we will look at them a bit later. Okay. Now, the equations here are if you look at the equations there will be a matrix A matrix here okay, the state matrix plus something corresponding to E 1 dash and E 2 dash. Okay, into omega plus another matrix which is E D and E Q. Now, one of the assumptions remember what I have made. So, you will have a, a matrix which is 4 into 4 okay, with the assumptions which I have made. This will be a 4 into 2 matrix this will be a 4 into 2 matrix E 1, E 2, E D, E Q. Okay. E D, E Q are going to be constants. Okay. E 1 dash and E 2 dash are going to be dependent on delta. I just said E 1 and E 2 are constants. Then why are E 1 e dash and E 2 dash dependent on delta? Remember, these were the original equations. If you look at the screen, uh, E 1 and E 2 are dependent on the rotor fluxes they are dependent just on the rotor fluxes. Okay. When I do the transformation to the upper case d and q variables E 1 dash and E 2 dash are going to be dependent on delta. So, just remember that E 1 and E 1 dash and E 2 dash are dependent on delta whereas, E 1 and E 2 are not. So, E 1 dash and E 2 dash are obtained after you transform the lower case d q variables to the upper case d q variables. Okay. So, E 1 dash and E 2 dash if you look at what I am writing E 1 dash and E 2 dash are dependent on delta. These are dependent on delta. There is also a omega dependence of this entire term. Okay. This matrix is 4 into 2. This is also a 4 into 2 matrix. Okay. This A matrix is in fact constant. Okay. We will we'll write this matrix down in the next class. This A matrix here is constant. This I will call this the B matrix here is B 1 matrix here is constant and this B 2 matrix here also is a constant. Okay. So, what we have here really is a system a fourth order system. We get a fourth order uh, system for the electrical network including the generator electrical equations. The reason why we are just four equations is because we have assumed the rotor fluxes to be constants and therefore, the differential equations relating to that are no longer into in the picture. Okay. V d and V q in fact, I should call this V c d and V c q I am sorry. So, these are in fact, the states corresponding to the series capacitor okay, of the electrical network and uh, this particular electrical network 
has got e1 dash and e2 dash which are functions of delta and the rotor fluxes. The rotor fluxes are a constant, but delta need not be uh, is of course, uh, can vary during uh, transient conditions. This delta in fact, it is delta of the generator. Okay, It is not the delta of uh, remember now I should make a distinction between the generator delta and the delta of all the turbines, because the turbines in principle during transients could have a position or the rotor position of the turbine mass could be different from that of the generator mass and so, so the speeds. So, omega should really correspond to the here to the electrical speed of the generator mass okay? and delta of course, here is the delta corresponding to the generator mass. So, this is something which we should keep in mind. Okay? So, this is one term which is like an input to the electrical system which is a function of the mechanical variables okay? and the constant rotor fluxes, constant because we have assumed them to be constant. This is a constant term and a constant matrix. So, this electrical network in fact has two inputs, one is the infinite bus voltages, okay? the second is the voltages, uh, in fact they are like voltages itself. The variation of these voltages of a synchronous generator are in fact dependent on the mechanical variables. So, if you look at the electrical and uh, uh, the if you look at the turbine generator system, in some sense the differential equations of the turbine generator system give you delta and omega g, the speed and the rotor position of the generator and the electrical network will give you I d, I q okay? and of course, from I d and I q you can also get psi d and psi q and also from both of these things you can get psi d I q minus psi q I d, this is the electrical torque. Okay? So, the turbine generator interacts with the electrical network through these variables and this in turn affects the turbine generator through the electrical torques. Okay, this is what I meant when I said that this is a kind of a interaction between the turbine generator system and the electrical network. And in the next lecture, I shall show you that this, this particular interaction can be adverse for the tor torsional oscillations. If the torsional oscillations are subsynchronous, that is their frequency is less than omega b, okay, the radian frequency is less than omega b and the electrical network is also compensated using a series capacitors using series capacitors. Okay? So, under both these circumstances, the torques actually may be such that they enhance the existing oscillation. So, this is something which we will complete in the next lecture okay? and uh, what I will try to show you is uh, you know using a case study, numerical case study is that uh, these oscillations, torsional oscillations can be destabilized by a series compensated electrical network and thereby you can damage the shaft. Okay, under certain circumstances. Okay. So, uh, with this uh, let us end today's lecture. Uh, after doing the torsional oscillation study, the case study, uh, we will move on to understanding some, some specific a few cases on how you can actually improve system stability. Okay. This is something which you have not actually studied, we have spent a lot of time on modeling and trying to show you some phenomena like low frequency oscillations, the effect of AVR, governor and now of course, uh, the adverse interaction between an electrical network and the turbine generator is something which I will complete in the next lecture. Okay? But we will spend a little bit of time, the end of this course in some sense, the end, ending part of this course on some simple case studies to illustrate how you can improve stability, this is something we have not concentrated so far. As far as today's lecture is concerned, what you need to remember before we start off uh, the next lecture is that we have to model a turbine generator if you want to study torsional oscillations by uh, uh, more differential equation for each lumped mass you will have a differential equation. Okay? And uh, one thing which is uh, something which I did not prove, but uh, you can easily infer that if you got a uh, multi mass multi mass representation of a rotor uh, of a turbine generator rotor you will have if you have n masses rotor masses you will have n minus 1 torsional frequency this is not proved but you can actually prove it okay this is an interesting exercise you also have the common motion wherein all masses move together 
this is in fact equivalent to what we used for low frequency oscillation studies in which we assumed that the whole system was whole turbine generator system was one rotor mass. We do not have to unlearn anything what we have done before, because we were looking at only one aspect of the motion. Okay. In addition now you have got torsional oscillations. Okay. Now, these torsional oscillations can be relatively high frequency more than 10 hertz. Okay. In that case you have to, if you want to understand the uh, interaction of the electrical network through the electrical torques which are generated with this tor turbine generator, gen uh, generator system. In that case you may have to model the turbine generator uh, the electrical network without net neglecting uh, the stator flux transients and the network transients. Okay. That is what you have done today. We have not neglected the d by d t is the d i d by d t is or the d psi d by d t or d psi q by d t. Okay. This is a major departure of uh, de departure from what we did when we studied low frequency transients where very routinely we used to neglect the rates of change of flux, uh, the, the stator fluxes as well as the network current um, uh, rates of change okay, in the d q variables. So, this is the major departure from what we were doing before and in fact, um, uh, it is it's important to remember in this course, although that uh, our focus has been to study slower transients in which we could make certain assumptions, there exist very important and interesting phenomena in way fast transient phenomena also in a power system and uh, sub synchronous resonance or adverse interaction between the electrical network and torsional turbine generator system is one of them. In fact, I did not actually show you an adverse interaction, I just kind of uh, put forth this tantalizing possibility that the electrical network may adversely affect the shaft torsional system. Okay. Now, this is something which I will show to you numerically in the next class that this actual possibility exists okay, for an electrical network which is series compensated. So, this is something we will do in the next time.